Greetings to you during this holiday season. I'm Irving Milton. I'm a Southern Conference pastor. I've been around forever. Uh, I've had various roles within the conference and this conference has blessed me greatly. Uh, and I find myself wanting to share some of that with you and with uh, those around you as we move toward this new year. The conference is trying to do some new things. Uh, in this day, new things means that we're trying to do, take some old things and also make those new. One of the new things that the conference is planning to do in the new year is to have a new online program that will be a leadership development program that will help churches and individuals, clergy and lay, move and learn new things about the conference. In order to learn the new things, sometimes we need to know the history. I'm one of those folks who have been around and have lived history, have learned history, and I share history. When I share it, though, I share it realizing that I'm sharing a history. Many people talk about history as being uh, the history. I, I believe that history comes through the eyes of the one sharing it. So let me tell you that as I share history, I share history as, a, as an African American who has lived my life in the South. I've traveled across this country and around uh, the world to some extent, but my history comes out of the eyes of uh, being in the South and as an African American growing up in the Congregational Church uh, in North Carolina. Now, let me tell you something as I move forward. That is that as I look at, at uh, history, when I say that it's through the eyes of the person, um, when I think about the, the Boston Tea Party, uh, they destroyed property. I didn't think about the Los Angeles riots. They destroyed property. Why is one a riot and the other one is a tea party? Well, it's through the eyes of the writer. And so, as we write history, you have to write your own history, but you read others, and I hope that you will study others. There will be others other than me doing some pieces throughout the uh, coming year to share history within the life of the church. I want to share a little bit of history with you to give you an idea of where some of us will be going, and particularly where I will be going as I do a later webinar uh, within the conference. You'll hear about it when it's coming, but uh, I do history uh, within the UCC doing two segments. One, uh, what we call polity. Polity is a, is a word that, that's used in this church, which means church government. Church government is, is that polity which we deal with. Polity, for instence, uh, I've, I've been saying before that it, it involves three segments. Uh, Episcopal, Presbyterian, and Congregational. Now, I always say that pre Episcopal uh, government is, is government for the people. This means for me that uh, organizations like uh, Methodists and the Episcopal Church, which has bishops and people over them, the, the, the diocese or the group outside them owns the property, and people make decisions for them. They send them their ministers. They, they uh, make decisions nationally, and everybody has to go back. Then there's the Presbyterian, which I would say is for and by the people. Now, this means for me that the Presbyterian style of government is a government that deals with the notion that Big decisions are made outside the church, but then 
they decide who meant what minister they're going to have. They can select their own minister, but they select them within the pool of folks that they give them. So that's why it's for and by the people. Then there's congregational, which is by the people. This means that these folks can decide for themselves in church meetings or in within themselves what their destiny is and how they control it. They usually own their property and they make decisions for themselves. Uh, it, the word autonomy is often used around this. Sometimes now we use covenant, but even then, it is the people have the ultimate decision. Now that means that people can decide what they want to do. However, that also means that if you got 100 people and I bring in 110, then the people control, and that means my 110 controls your 100. So there's always an up and a downside to all of these. I'm going to add one more, and that's um, what I'm now calling the CEO model. That is, is a growing way within the church where you elect the pastor, you elect leadership, and they run it. They, 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 it's the corporate style of government, and, and many churches, particularly uh, um, larger churches now, are using this method, and it means that once you've elected that person as the head, they pretty much run the organization. And that's a, that's a new growing trend, particularly among younger ministers and churches that's occurred. Now, quickly, I want to tell you what, and, and we'll flush these out later as time goes on, but the, the UCC is, is made up of primarily four previous denominations, congregational, Christian, Evangelical, and Reform. Now, Congregationalists came in with, the, when the Pilgrims came in, they were viewed as uh, wanting to reform uh, church government and church the church. They ended up, many of them ended up being Congregationalists. So most people, many people, I think the Congregational Church back to, to the Pilgrims coming in 1620. The Christian Church has actually three segments, but the one that primarily affects us is the James O'Kelly Christians, which dates back primarily to 1792 when James O'Kelly, uh, a Methodist, and some others pulled out and started the, the Christian church. Uh, there's a whole piece to that as to how they got started. Then the evangelicals, this, by the way, the Christians are primarily in North Carolina and Virginia, and many of the churches out of these, out of this Christian church, are right here in the Southern Conference. Most of them, in fact. The Evangelical Church uh, dates back to about 1840 when Germans uh, came from uh, what was then Prussia, came up the Mississippi Valley and, and uh, share, uh, spread it out there and uh, formed the Evangelical Church. So if you go out in St. Louis and places like that, you will see lots of Evangelical churches. The reform, uh, again, Germans came into the New York Harbor, came down the Shenandoah Valley, into the Catawba Valley, and, and, start, and formed the Reformed Church. Um, so that in North Carolina, for instance, Western North Carolina is heavy Reformed churches. These two merged in 1931. These two in 1934. Um, they went on to form the United Church of Christ in 50, 1957. So that's a quick history of that. Now, in this conference, you've got about a third of the churches that are black. And when you go to the black churches, you cross off the evangelical and reformed churches because there were no churches uh, that came out of these. Uh, the American Missionary Association start, uh, in 1846 
was formed and helped to start congregational churches uh, in this area. Around 1870, with the exception of Providence Church in, in Chesapeake, Virginia, which dates back to 1853, you get these churches coming out of the balconies of the Christian, the white Christian churches and forming uh, congregations uh, so that you get the blacks coming through these. There were conferences formed from these, uh, which when it came to this merger in 1931, were not affected. The black conferences remained in this conference until 19, actually there was 57, they still remained until 1966 when this conference was formed. Now let me just quickly say that this conference was officially voted in in 1964, but it did not start officially until 1966. Now that's a quick synopsis. Of, of our history. There's a lot of flushing out that has to go on within this, some of which you might even add in as you look at your own church and look at its own background to see what conference it was in, which one of these roots it was in, and if it dates later than these, it would have not had necessarily any of these roots. We started, began to start churches uh, in this conference that that were um, UCC, but did not come out of any of these roots. Now, these churches, these denominations, all have roots. Many churches out of them have deep roots in these conferences, and it's helpful to know how you fit into this and how you fit into the whole, and that's what we'll be talking about as we move forward because it's important as we look forward to know where you come from but then to know how you fit in to what he is now and we'll be doing that as we move forward in the future look forward to other times we're going to do webinars we're going to do various seminars we're going to be doing dvds that will be available for local church life and uh, dr davis and uh, the uh, leadership of this conference will be sharing that as it comes forward. So look for it, and, and we'll see how it works. Thank you for your time, and may God bless you.